Hey there guys, alright I just wanted to do a, a quick video just a little bit about your batteries and this is specifically these LiPo batteries for your Hubson H501 um, and how important it is if I've had my batteries now for I'm coming into my 16th month very soon um, as we go into next month it'll be my 16th month I get a lot of pleasure out of these batteries I have cycled them quite a few times because I've had a lot of a lot of hours of flights, and I still get. It varies depending on the weather. It depends on how I'm flying, but I still generally get 17 minutes of flight time as a nominal. Okay. There are times when I get slightly less, and there are times when I get, you know, sort of 18, 19 minutes, pretty much close to that 20 minutes. Now, the important thing about these batteries is how you charge, how you discharge, and how you store them. This particular one, as you can see, at the black end, is the one that came with the drone. The one that came from Hubson, with the Hubson drone. And just like we found out before, what you get with the drone isn't necessarily what you might rebuy again when you buy a replacement battery or just another battery to add to your collection for more flight time. You will see a few things a bit different about them. One, there's a slight difference in physical size. I think that's maybe because they've had an extra layer of insulation. I'm not sure if that is the case, but... As you can see here, you've got black insulation. I don't know whether this is extra over the black or not. I don't think it uh, really matters that much, but you do find that these ones, aftermarket ones, or the ones that you can get from Gearbest, Banggood, these are all from Gearbest, by the way, my batteries, apart from this. Um, they're just slightly different, slightly, slightly thicker, slightly more snug fit as you push it into your drone. You'll, you'll see there's a slight more snug fit. And that is the area of difference. There's a slight difference on weight, but that could be because of this extra bit of wrapping. If there is an extra bit of wrapping, then there's maybe a slight difference in the, the lead sizes. But you're talking millimetres, no real big difference at all. The most important thing, if you want to keep your batteries running and running well, is you need to be able to, as I said, charge them and discharge them. And if you're not going to be using them for a while, you want to be able to store them. Now... Storing a fully charged battery is not a good idea. Okay, there's a lot of um, charge in there and the chemical reaction in there is going to be quite active and it's not very good for keeping your batteries longevity. Storing them while they're fully discharged, again, is no good. You need to have these at a proper storage voltage. The proper storage voltage for a single cell on a LiPo battery is 3.8 volts. Okay? So, if you are going to store this battery, you're going to be storing it at 7.6 volts. Any other voltage, the battery is not going to be happy. Very, very important. Very, very important for not only for your shelf life. But if you want to keep the maximum amount of flight time out of these, you need to keep these batteries happy. Now, I would consider them to be pretty much the second most important thing, apart from your drone itself, is the batteries. Because these are the things that if they don't work, or if you're already going to get 10 minutes flight time out of them, you're not going to be a happy bunny. Because these are not cheap. They're not cheap to buy. So... What I would recommend when you get your batteries is the, the charger that comes with the Hubson um, drone is, it's like, a, hey, we'll get you charged up, but it's not a good, particularly good charger. I would really, really recommend that you buy yourself a decent battery charger. And not just a battery charger, it wants to be a battery balancing charger. It wants to be a battery charger that has a storage facility so you can just hit that storage button and it will charge or discharge the battery as long as it's not fully charged or fully discharged 
but it will charge and discharge that battery to its storage voltage which means then you can stick it up on a shelf and you can leave it for weeks at a time months even and it's not going to damage the battery these things have internal resistances and that's look there's a whole bunch of science when it comes to this and i'm not going to get into all that because there's just so much to it but if you want to get these like i said i still get full full back out of these and i've got another one over there but it's actually powering my keyboard um, at the moment because it seems to eat through regular batteries but it takes quite a long time chomping through one of these i would suggest you get a decent battery charger now let me just shift this out oh let me just show you first of all the recommendations for this now there's you can look at the other batteries if you like but i would say you just want to look at this just just so you can see where i'm getting my information from and it's not the only place i get my information from so here we go lipo okay so that's what you want to look at now when you see the storage voltage there you go okay and this isn't something that i've just knocked up on a spreadsheet this is from a manufacturer and the manufacturer is the manual actually for the battery charger that i have and this is a great battery charger this is not going to turn into a review for this battery charger because that's not what i'm trying to do i'm just trying to give you some hints and tips from my experiences now with i'm going to put 12 volts into this with my hubson now it's already set up for lipo it's set up at 2.7 uh, amps because that's if i'm charging four batteries uh, that's pretty much the, um, the the charge rate that i have it on uh, if i'm only charging three batteries um, or two i generally have it at two amps now it doesn't actually take it up to this because i can monitor what my power supply puts out to this and if it says 2.7 here and i go to charge it 2.7 this really is putting in about 2.2. If it says 2 amps, it's putting in about 1.6. I know that because I can see what's happening over there on my charger. I can see the power. It says one thing here, but what it's actually doing is a, is a different thing. Whatever the reason for that is, I don't know. But as far as I'm concerned, I do not want to fast charge my batteries. One thing is, and the reason why I wouldn't fast charge one of these is... I can't find the manufacturer's specifications for this particular battery. Oh, I can find it's a 7.4 volt nominal. I can see it's a 10C, 20 watt hour. But that doesn't tell me whether it can be fast charged or not. And the only place you're going to get that information is directly from the manufacturer. Can it be fast charged? I would say no. Just for safety's sake. Not because I'm saying yes it can or no it can't, but for safety's sake I would go with the safest option and just don't do it. So and that's another important thing about keeping your batteries in a for longevity uh, for your flight times is don't try and force feed charge into these. If anything, you know 800 milliamps, which is what those the hubs and I mine died, mine died straight away. They sent me out a. Um, they sent me out a, an American adapter and I plugged it into the adapter, uh, the, the 120 volt adapter, 240 volts, and it, it fried the whole thing. Uh, and that was, you know, that was their mistake. No, they were good to me about it. But I think 800 milliamps being pushed into one of these is too much anyway. Personally, uh, 600, I'd say. And personally, for me, I, I go more like 500. If I'm doing three, because like I say, it only puts 1.6 in anyway, so I'm only given just over 500 on three batteries, charging three batteries at a time, and I take out a minimum of three batteries. I generally take out sort of four. Uh, tomorrow, all these batteries are charged ready to take out five tomorrow, because I'm going to be doing some quite a bit of flying tomorrow, hopefully. So, but as you'll see, on a battery charger like this, you have, let me just, let me just stop, I'm just going to go backwards, you've got to, LiPo discharge. That's because I've not got enough power going in. So let me just adjust my power going in here. And we're going to tell it up to 15 volts. That should be quite happy. Okay, and I just up the input there. 
sorry, it's a one one power supply has to feed another power supply has to feed another. So uh, we've got nothing else connected there, have we? So we got a discharge facility. We have a storage facility. Most important, this storage facility. Do not, as I say, store your batteries fully flat. A 6.8 volt storage is not going to do your batteries any good. 7 volts not going to do your batteries any good. 7.2, 7.6 is what the recommended storage value. 3.8 volt per cell. So if you've got two cell battery, just add it up. 7.6, three cell, just add it again. Okay. You've got a fast charge. Again, the manufacturer, I can't find the information, so I wouldn't suggest using a fast charge on these batteries. And you've got a standard charge. I always go for the balance charge, which means that it can calculate the difference on voltage on each cell and adjust the charge to that. Okay, and you can also do that when it does a storage, you can also do that when it does a discharge. Because like I said, if you've charged up your batteries and you may, you think you, you run into a good spell of weather and then you realize you've got maybe five, six days that you're not going to use those batteries, I won't allow mine to sit for more than three days. Three days and I'm starting to fret that I'm, the batteries are going to be unhappy. So really the rule is, third day, those batteries are being discharged. They'll be discharged and they'll be sat at the storage rate until I'm ready to go out again. And like I say, I've managed to keep my batteries now, uh, these same batteries, for I'm coming into my 16th month next month. And I am really, really happy with their performance. Really, really happy. All of them. Not one of them is any different to the other. I can't see that there's any difference between the one that came in the box apart from those few physical things that we've already said, the performance wise is, is brilliant. There's gonna be variations. There's gonna be variations between the weather, whether I'm going flying into the wind, the heat makes a bit of a difference. Nothing really that you're gonna to see too much, but these things do make differences. But a lot of it is down to how you charge and how you discharge, to how far you use that battery up and how hard you charge that battery and if you just sit and leave it in that fully charged state for too long you're damaging your battery also i'll do a full uh, not a full but i'll do a lipo review on this because i'm pretty confident now that i could do that and give you all the information to keep these particular batteries and i not talk about any other batteries this does lots of different types of batteries uh one two three four five six seven different types of batteries okay but i'm only going to be discussing these because these are the only ones that i can share my experience with and successful experience also i use this uh and i'll tell you another good thing about this as well is it also tells you um <laughs> i'm not gonna let this get into uh, any type of review so let me just stop that but it also tells you um the battery memory is you setting up for your different types of batteries but i just use the um i just use the preset type thing and i just adjust my my current um, as i need to because i use two cells so on the, the lighter batteries let me do a stop on that again and go back battery memory system setting so you can check your battery resistances it'll check each cell and tell you in milliohms what the resistances are on the cells which is pretty good and you've also got a battery meter I'll show you the, let me just connect a battery now, when you connect to one of these, um, and these work very, very well, this, um, let me just get that in the camera a bit better, I made up my own leads, so they're looking uh, not very good, they're very practical, and they're, they're, they're insulated and everything, but I made up my own because when you buy these leads, you can spend £5, £6 I saw, uh, just for one connector, one lead, one connector. And I just thought that was too much. I'm trying to get that to shot a bit better. And I, I thought that was way too much. And I managed to get uh, a whole bunch of these um, EC2s and those other connectors. I, I can't remember what they're called exactly. Uh, pretty cheap. Only cost me basically uh, a couple of pounds for the for the whole lot. So yeah, so you can do the battery meter. I'm gonna pull this around like this. And then I can just do a, a start on that. Look, and it'll tell me. It'll tell me which, what's on each cell of the battery. And as you can see, you can have uh, six six cells there. 
I don't know really I don't really use that all the time to be honest with you basically I charge my batteries and I uh, and I use them I if I'm gonna be not flying for a while I'll put them into storage by making sure that I use the storage facility on this and that's it and I've managed to keep these batteries in tip-top condition for all this time so far and I'm hoping fingers crossed I'm hoping that um, by using a decent bit of kit like this because I think you know this is a uh, to keep your drone on the go you need something that's going to be looking after your batteries because this is the power source for your drone second to the drone it's the most important thing I think personally is your power source and in order to keep your power source good you need to be able to look after your power source and this type of thing is the ideal thing it doesn't have to be this exact one but something that has these facilities something that gives you a condition charge which is the balanced charge something that gives you a discharge so if you've got batteries and you're not going to be using you can discharge them down and then something that you can put it into a storage mode and so you can charge the battery or discharge the battery not from full or from fully depleted but you can put it into a storage voltage and then you can have them sat on the shelf for a whole bunch of time without worrying that they're damaging the internals, the chemical internals of the battery. Okay. Thanks for watching. Find it useful, please. Give us a thumbs up, give us a like, whatever. And, uh, and I'll catch you in the next one.